I am gonna talk about connecting your front and back office. Now we're gonna go through a whole bunch in this track. We're gonna start here talking about the front part of your business. So we're gonna talk about marketing your business and that really starts with your website. So we're gonna talk about having that domain and building your online presence. And then we're talking about making sure that, that online presence is effective and you're doing everything that you can to optimize that. And then we're gonna talk about how you can drive traffic to that website. So if you have a, a website that's not really doing anything for you, it's, it's sitting there on the internet, and if people come across it, it's helpful, but how are people gonna come across it? You have to actually drive them there. So we're gonna talk about how you can drive traffic to that online presence, and then how you can take that traffic and generate leads. So take all of that anonymous web traffic and actually make some sales, make some customers out of that. Then we're gonna talk a little bit more about the sales process. So Travis is gonna come up here, he's gonna talk about following up and closing with those leads. So as I mentioned, we're gonna start off with a section where we're talking about our sales and marketing and support process. So this is really just your customer journey repurposed. So you can see here, we're gonna start off talking about your domain, your online presence, talk about driving that traffic and then converting them into sales. And that really all starts with marketing your business. But how do you start Marketing, you need that domain, you need that website. Now since most of you have websites, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this, but I wanna take a minute to look at an example of an effective online presence. So for that, we've built an example company called Leave IT to Us. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that. Um, Leave IT to Us is an IT service provider. So that means that they provide IT services for different companies. They can come in, they can help manage security, they can help manage servers, they can help manage networks, they can track and close your tickets. They can do different things to help with different areas of IT in your business. And they have a website that we've worked to build out a lot of information in. So here we have Leave IT to Us's website. Now you can see here, first we have our, our logo, some cool information, and then we have this carousel. This goes through a couple different reasons why people might wanna work with us. It's 9.30 a.m. on a Monday, your printer isn't working. That's where we come in, right? We can come in and help with that. We go through a few different services that we offer here, and then we talk about why we exist, right? Why do you need to outsource IT at all? So we're building a little bit more of a value proposition here. And then we have a great section here that's all about our testimonials. I'm a big believer in customer advocacy. Having your customers be willing to speak for you can really make or break your business. You can say all of the great things, but until it's coming from an impartial third party source, it's really hard to actually market that. So. We have this great testimonial section here, highlights why our customers love us. Looks like that we upped response time by 85%. And then we have a few more pages on our website here. So we have a services page here. This goes through a few of the different services that we offer. You can see we offer some security, disaster recovery. Now security is something that we care a lot about at Leave IT to us because security is one of the most dangerous things about owning a business these days. There are DDoS attacks all the time, everyone is trying to get your data, and on top of that, you have to make sure that you're keeping your customer information safe and not risking that. The last thing you wanna do is let down your customers. So Leave IT to Us really focuses on our security solutions, and we have a landing page here specifically for our security. And you can see this goes through some information here, highlights some of the different ways that we can help with security. We have a little testimonial about specifically security. And then we have a form here that people can fill out. Now if they fill out this form, they will automatically be added to our CRM where we can start to follow up with these people. There are a couple other pages here that just build out our website a little bit more. You can see if we click on the support, we actually get a support portal here. Now this isn't part of our website. This is actually linked from Zoho Desk. So this is just mapped to our domain here and gives our customers an easy place to log in, track tickets, search through our knowledge base, see if there's something that they need help with, anything that they might need. We have an About Us page giving people a little bit more information about our team and what we do. And then we have a contact us page. This is another place where people can fill out their information and let us know that they want to work with us. But as you might have noticed, we also have this little thing that's been following us around the website and getting in my way all over the place. This is a piece of Zoho Sales IQ. 
Now what Sales IQ does is it allows you to track and engage your visitors in real time while they're on your website. So not only can you see data on where your visitors are coming from, what devices they're using, what pages they're looking at, but you can chat with them live. But maybe you don't want to always be sitting on your website and waiting to chat with whoever lands there. Uh, you're also able to build bots within Sales IQ that will chat with the people on your website for you, take care of some common queries and common problems that people are asking you about. So we've taken a look at the website. I think this is a, a fairly effective presence, goes through a lot of those things. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that, but first I wanted to show you how we built this. So the good news is everything on this website is, surprise, surprise, done with Zoho One, right? And this website is actually done through Zoho Sites. Zoho Sites is our drag and drop website builder. So Zoho Sites is similar to a lot of other drag and drop website builders with a couple other cool, unique features here. So first thing you'll notice if you haven't worked with a drag and drop website builder before is that you can work on your website while you're looking at it. This makes a really big difference for me and for a lot of people. If you're having someone else code your website or if you're coding it yourself, if you're working with another third party, you likely can't see what changes are being affected on your website. You can request certain things, but you're always counting on the fact that like your designer understands what you want, that they're gonna put it where you want it to be. This allows you to skip that step entirely. So while you load this up, we can change it and directly see the effect of that change. So if we wanted to change any of this text, highlight, easily change that. Maybe it isn't our printer, maybe it's our network isn't working, whatever that needs to be. You can also scroll down here and easily change out images. So say we wanna change this out, we come over here, click change image, and this will pull up a whole library of images we've already uploaded or we can upload from our computer here directly. Now if we wanna change this out, all we do is select, and it will automatically scale for that as well. So if the image is a different size, it will scale that so it displays correctly. Then we get to this testimonial section that I think is really important. Now the cool thing about this and sites in general is we try to make it really easy to just pick up and go. So as soon as you get into sites, you'll notice that you have a whole bunch of different templates to start from. These are popular designs of websites that contain the pieces you typically need for your website. So you start off with a template, but maybe you wanna build in some more customization. So for that, Zoho Sites has a whole bunch of pre-made sections. So you can see here if I hover, I get this little add section button. I'm gonna go ahead and click this, and it pulls up this menu. We recently added like 90 more pre-made sections here. So it's really a ton of design options here that you can look through and decide what you want. In this case, maybe we don't like those logos and we wanna feature our customers more directly. Maybe we can just click this and it automatically pulls this in. We can easily change out any of these images, any of this text about what we need it to be, or if we wanna get rid of this section altogether, we can go ahead and delete it there. So this just allows you to have a lot more customization in terms of picking up your website and picking up pieces that look good that you don't have to do a ton of work to make look good, and then you can specialize them for your business. Now you can obviously build other pages as well. It really just helps with your entire website. But once you have a website, how do you know that it's working? You know your website is working if you're bringing in leads, right? But what if you aren't bringing any leads? Or what if you're not bringing in as many leads as you like? For that, we turn to analytics. Okay, a good amount of you. Google Analytics is a really powerful tool, and I highly recommend you use it. You can do a whole lot with it, but it can be a little bit dense to dive into and a little bit dense to understand. So Zoho has an alternative here called, not an alternative, a supplemental product called PageSense. Now what PageSense does is it allows us to view a lot of those analytics that Google gives us, but in a more visual format, and it also gives us a few things that Google Analytics doesn't. So here we're gonna go ahead and go into a project. Now the first thing we see going into PageSense is we have goals. So these are things that we've set up as, these are what we want people to do on our website. So as soon as they land there, we want them to click on our services or on our security page. These are two things that are really important to us. So this will track your visitors, it will track your conversions, and track the time to convert. So allow you to easily keep an eye on your analytics there. But there are a whole bunch of other things that you can also do. 
Now, I think we've showed you a good amount of this, but I'm going to show you our heat map just for a moment. How many of you are familiar with the heat map? Good amount of you. I won't spend a ton of time on this. Uh, so this will allow you to easily see what people are interacting with on your website. So you can see what people are clicking on. We can filter this by different devices if we have people coming on mobile or iPad. The scroll map here will actually show us how far down people are scrolling on each individual page of our website. So you can see here, this for average fold line shows us where a typical browser cuts off the first section of our website. So typically, you'll have 100% of your visitors there. But the further down we go, the worse it gets, right? We get down here, and we only have 26% of our visitors making it this far. And we don't even have that long of a website. It's a pretty short website. So the fact that we're losing a lot of our traffic there tells us that maybe we need to change something about that. If we want people to see our testimonials, maybe we move them up to the top of the page. So then we can look at doing some sort of test with your website. Now, how many of you are familiar with the concept of A-B testing? OK, great. So typically, A-B testing is done with an email or maybe with a social media post. Essentially, it's testing two different versions of the same thing to see which one is going to perform better. What PageSense does is it allows you to do live A-B testing with your website. So I'll show you how to set that up here. We're going to click New A-B Test. Now, in this case, I really care about driving people to this security page. Because as I said, I think security is a really big factor in IT. I think it's going to be really popular for us. So I want to drive people to that page. So I'm going to go ahead and call this security. Then I will pull in the page we want here. And I actually want to change it from our home page. Because I want to see how we can get more people to that page. So I'm going to go ahead and create this test. And then you see this automatically pulls in a version of our website. So you don't have to use Zoho Sites to use PageSense. If you're using something like WordPress, any other website, you can still use PageSense. All you need to do is insert a small snippet of code to your website. And then what this will do is it will pull in essentially an alternative version of your website that you are able to interact with the same way that you would with Zoho Sites. So we try to make this very simple here. So for instance, Maybe we want to change this title. Maybe it's not missing that IT factor. Maybe it's, maybe it's missing that security factor. Maybe we want to just make this page all about security, just make sure it's top of mind for people. You can easily change that. Maybe we want to change this image to be something more security focused. In this case, I'm going to just leave this main CTA. I think bringing security up this soon will easily allow us to direct that traffic a little bit more, make people think about security. So we went ahead and changed that content. We'll go ahead and click Save. Now you can change multiple things in your A-B tests. The one thing to keep in mind here is that you want to be sure you know what is actually making a difference. So if you make an entirely different version of your website, which you theoretically could do, you're not going to understand what is causing the change in behavior that you're observing. So be sure that you're keeping controls on your experiment. Now here we can make a new goal. So what do we want people to do? How are we going to measure the effectiveness of this A-B test? Now we can do this a whole bunch of different ways. We can do this based on revenue. We can do this based on time spent on the page. We could do it based on what they're engaging with or how many pages they go to. But in this case, I want to track clicks on specific element because I want people to click on our security page. Now I could type in some code here. But I'm not going to do that because I'm a literature major, and I don't, I'm not great with code. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in this element selector. Now again, this just pulls in that alternative version of your website that you can interact with just by clicking. So here we want to track a couple things. We want to track this security button, right? We want to see if anyone's clicking on that security page. But we also have another security button here, right here. How secure? Very secure. So we're going to go ahead and click Learn About Our Big Time Security. We want to track that as well. And we'll go ahead and click Save. Now again, you can create multiple goals here. It's just good to keep in mind exactly what you're trying to test so you have an effective experiment. Now there are a couple other cool things that you can do here. So you can only do this A-B test with a certain percentage of your audience. So for instance, if you are a massive corporation, you get a ton of traffic on your website, and you really don't want to risk changing something, you can easily lower this down. So you can maybe only test it with, say, 38% of your audience. But if you're a smaller company, you may need to test with your entire audience in order to get an accurate sample size. 
you can also go ahead and target this a little bit more specifically. So in this case, we have it going to all visitors. We could also target this to different segments of our visitors. So maybe we only want to test AB testing, we only want to test for our security page with our social media traffic. Or maybe we only want to test with people who are coming to our website for the first time. These are all things that we can easily change and target to give ourselves a more effective test. Now there are a couple other cool things here that we can configure even further. So if we want to show one version of our website more frequently than the other, we can easily scale these. Maybe I wanna show this version, I wanna show the original less, right? Because I wanna, I wanna get a really good sample of this. So I'm gonna say we wanna show it 70-30. We wanna show our variation a whole lot more than our original. You can also go through here and change a couple other things. So you could run this test really quickly to get really quick insights, make actionable insights and change things on your website immediately. You could run this over a long amount of time, that would give you high accuracy. A lot of things that you can really customize here. Then we have the summary page, just gives us a good overview of everything. And as soon as we click launch here, this will immediately produce two separate versions of our website live. That means people are engaging with those two separate versions, they're hopefully clicking on our securities page, and we can go in and really understand how people are interacting and if our change is making a difference. Now if we see that this A-B test is really effective and doing a really good job, then it's a really good sign that we should push that live to our website. But this gives us a really handy tool to test those changes before we push them live. Give us a chance to get some data on if that's going to work or not. So we've talked about your website. We've talked a little bit about how you can build that online presence. We talked even more about how you can make sure that online presence is effective. But once you have that effective online presence, what are you gonna do with it? It's on the internet. Maybe people are finding it on Google. Maybe they're somehow finding you. But otherwise, you need to drive traffic to that website. Because otherwise, it's just sitting on the internet, not really doing anything for you. So there are a whole bunch of different ways that you can drive traffic to your website. You could use social media, you could do email campaigns, you could do different advertising campaigns, but whatever way you wanna drive traffic to your website, you wanna make sure that that traffic is all going to the same place and you're keeping track of that yourself so that you know which means of marketing and advertising are the most effective for your business. So we're gonna look at a whole bunch of different types of advertising and talk about how those can all pull in and help you track ROI on each of these so that you know what's most effective for your individual business. Now, how many people here do traditional mass advertising? Something like billboards, newspapers, radio ads, TV ads? Okay, a couple of you, awesome. So this is, they've always been there and to some extent, they always will be. Like, you will always need certain pieces of these to get things done. But they're really hard to track. How do you know that your billboards are effective? How do you know that your newspaper ads are effective? If you're just putting a link to your website, you don't really know where that traffic is coming from. So one of the good ways that you can do this is by having custom URLs. So this means that you have a specific page that is designed for this campaign. For instance, if we wanna drive a lot of traffic to our securities page, but maybe we got out a billboard in Austin, because we hear that Austin is the biggest tech capital, right? It's really growing, there are a lot of people here. So we have a billboard specifically about amping up your business security in Austin. But because it's localized, we want that content to be localized as well. So maybe we don't lead them directly to our securities page. Maybe we build another page on our website that has all that securities information, but it's a little bit more specialized. It's more localized. This is a lot of what my team does in terms of field marketing, is we look at different ways that we can locally engage with people to bring in the right information that they're looking for. So for this, you can have a custom URL, a specialized landing page with your content tailored to that specific lead type. And then you would have a form on that page that captures the lead source. But you don't want people to necessarily type in like, where did you hear from us? Because then you get some people that type in like, well, I heard from you from Google, or like, I heard from you from a friend. You're like, oh, that's, that's really helpful. Let me reach out and ask which friend of yours referred me, and then I'll go and ask that friend if they can go market my business. Um, so in this case, we're able to do that through a lead form. So we can create that lead form from within Zoho CRM. 
So this is a, a screenshot here of creating that lead form here. And then you can see at the very bottom there, we have that lead source. Now this is a hidden field. We can control whether or not we wanna hide this. In this case, we've said mark that as a hidden field. And this lead source can be a variety of things. You can customize this for your business and for the type of lead sources that you typically use. And what that will end up looking like is like one of these forms on your website. And that means that as soon as people fill out this form, they are automatically added to your CRM so that your sales team can follow up with them, but they also get information on where that lead came from so that they know how they should sell to them. Maybe they know that they're in Austin. They're like, all right, great, I'm here too. Let's go get coffee. Different things that will help your sales team be more effective. But what about digital marketing? This is one of the growing means that's, that's really becoming necessary in today's world. And there are a lot of different things that you can do in terms of digital marketing. So some popular digital ad sources. Social media is a huge one. A lot of people do social media advertising with measured efficiency. Uh, so we have first here, you can do Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. You can also do Google ads here. Uh, so we're gonna talk a little bit how you can do each of those with Zoho. So Facebook gives you a couple, Facebook gives you a lot of options in terms of advertising, but two of the main ones are pixel tracking and lead ads. So pixel tracking is through some of their main ad sources. And what this does is it's a pixel that you install on your website that allows Facebook to track your visitors. Now what this means is when someone comes from a ad on Facebook to your website, the, all, everything they do on your website is associated with their Facebook profile. Now the good thing about this is it means that you can retarget them more effectively. So if you ever get those ads that are like, really, really targeted to something that you were just looking at or just thinking about buying, or maybe you had just, you're, you've been Googling for a new printer and then all of a sudden all of your social media ads are about printers, you can thank Facebook Pixels for that. Um, or you can do lead ads. Lead ads are one of the cool new things that Facebook is offering that allow you to centralize a lot of this information. So these are ads that you create that will automatically pull in information from that user's Facebook profile and add that as a lead. So the, you can actually run these ads directly from Zoho Social, which then syncs over to CRM. So you can monitor the leads you're getting from this in real time, not on Facebook, so you don't have to worry about going to that other platform. And you can sync that with Zoho CRM from social with just a click. And then you can also map fields. So you can map fields in those Facebook lead forms to unique CRM fields. So maybe your business needs to know something specific, like how many employees. If you ask that question in the lead form, you can easily map that to your CRM. So here's an example of that Facebook pixel ad, fairly standard ad. And what that will do is report back to Facebook so that you can track what those people are looking at and what kind of revenue that's producing to better target them next time. This is an example of that lead ad. So you can see we have an ad here. As soon as someone clicks that button, it pulls up a form. Now this form will automatically fill the information that they have associated with their Facebook profile. So their name, their email, whatever other information we're looking for. But it will also allow that person to change that information. So maybe they wanna put in their business email instead of their personal email. Maybe they need to type in their company name. They can easily edit those fields and then submit them. Now what this does then is it reports back to, first of all, Facebook analytics, because this allows you to understand how effective your ads are, right? You can understand how much you're spending, how many leads you're getting here, what your cost per lead is. But this also reports back to Zoho. So as soon as someone fills out that lead form, it immediately goes back to Zoho Social. So we can view all of our leads from our lead ad here. This is syncing with our CRM, so these leads are already in our CRM. And that means that we have information on them in our CRM. So we have a lead here that our sales team can already start working on. You can see if we look at this lead source here, we have a Facebook ad web form. So this person came from one of our Facebook lead ads. And we can even dive deeper to see which individual ad they came from. So this is a great way of really understanding the ROI of each individual Facebook ad and understanding where your leads are coming from. But how about Google Ads? Google Ads are really popular. For those of you that don't understand, I'm gonna show you. So here's a typical Google search for IT security services. This is something that Leave IT to Us does. And you can see we have some organic search results here, all about IT services, managed security providers, 
but we also have a couple ads up top. Now one of these is our ads, Unparalleled Security IT Services. We wanna drive people to this securities page, so we're advertising it directly on Google. Now what this does is when someone clicks on that ad, it will report back to the Google ad panel. So if they click on that ad, go to your website and make a purchase, you'll be able to see that revenue reflected on Google's side. But you'll also be able to see that revenue reflected in Zoho. So as soon as they become that customer, you can see they're added here with all of the information on which Google ad brought them here. Zoho CRM is the only CRM that currently integrates with Google AdWords in this way. We're able to easily track the ROI on each individual AdWord to understand what is performing well for us, what is bringing us the best ROI, so we can really hone in and optimize that performance. But what about other digital ads, right? We're in a digital world. There are a whole lot of places that we can advertise beyond Google, Facebook, social media. Maybe you have an affiliate link, right? Maybe you have a company that does something similar and you host an ad for your website on theirs. So you have a link there that you need to customize. You have an experience for your leads that you need to customize. Or maybe you have an ad on another third party source, maybe like a small newspaper that's local to you or some other third party source. Or you send email campaigns. Email campaigns can be pretty simple through Zoho campaigns, but you can also do this through tracking sources for your URLs. So how do we know these means are effective, right? How can we track affiliate links? How can we track third-party ads to understand if they're really bringing us leads? So for that, what we can do is use some URL parameters. Now this gets a little bit complicated, so I'm gonna take a minute to just explain different pieces of this. Essentially, this is one piece of your URL bar that you will add on to dictate where people are coming from. So you can keep it simple. If you wanna just have your source here, you can easily just have source, and you can call that whatever you want. But your source tells you where that traffic is coming from. Is it coming from a third-party site? Is it coming from Twitter? Is it coming from our specific Austin billboard? You can also specify campaign name here. So why is this traffic coming to me? This would be what specific ad you're using. For instance, it's because of our launch video. It's because of our lead ad. It's because of our cross-sell campaign. Medium here tells us how that traffic is coming to you. So through what means? Through social media, through one of our billboards, through one of our snail mail campaigns, whatever this is for your business. And then what we can do is work with that to generate leads on our business. So we have this great ad. We wanna feature our security, and so we made this really, really trustworthy ad that we think people are definitely gonna to wanna to click on. Or we could have an ad that's a little bit more respectable here, actually gives some information about what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this ad, and it will bring us to our security page here. Now if we zoom in here, this is what I'm talking about when I say URL parameters. So we can see here we have our UTM source, Look, marked as third party, our medium marked here, and our campaign marked here. But from the user experience, we've clicked on an ad. That's all we know, we clicked on an ad and we came to our securities page. So we can look through this page, maybe we decide we wanna fill out this form, maybe we're convinced we wanna work with Leave IT to us. We could fill out this form and it would add to our CRM with that lead source. Or we could use this handy bot. Now this bot, as I mentioned, is built out of Zoho Sales IQ. So we're gonna go ahead and talk to the bot and see if it can help us out. So it says, hey, I'm the IT bot. How can I help you today? I'm gonna say, I'd like to book a consultation. Okay, I guess I can do that. When do you want your consultation? So I'm gonna go ahead and click book here. Maybe none of those dates look good. I wanna talk to them on Wednesday and we get to select times here. Now you can easily set this up so that as soon as a time slot is booked, it's marked as unavailable and no one else is able to book that same slot. In this case, we're just gonna say we wanna meet at noon. All right, we're gonna go ahead and confirm that time. Before I finish booking, I need a couple details. Okay, we can give them a couple details. My name is Karen Crow. Okay, what's my email? Karen Crow at zoho.com. All right, what's my phone number? I'll log in my phone number here. Definitely my real phone number. What's my company name? My company name is 
big time leads. I bring in lots of leads for lots of businesses. So now we've gone ahead and booked that consultation just by using this simple bot without ever having to talk to someone or submit a form, it easily asks us for those details. And then what that does is it syncs back to Zoho CRM. So we're gonna go ahead and open CRM here and take a look. And what this actually does is it books to not only CRM, but to Zoho Bookings. Uh, Zoho Bookings is our new platform to book appointments. So similar to Acuity or Calendly, just something that allows people to book a time with you. Now I'm gonna show this to you in CRM, but I also wanna show you bookings just so you get a good view of that UI. So this is Zoho Bookings, whenever it loads. And uh, this will show us our schedule for the day. But we can also go here and look at customers. So we get a specific list here. And you can see right at the top we have Karen Crow. She's scheduled for our time. So Zoho Bookings is a fairly simple app, but just really allows you to schedule at that time. But the real power is the way that it integrates with the rest of the Zoho ecosystem. So we can look within our CRM, and we're gonna go ahead to our leads module, and we can see automatically we have that lead here. Karen Crow automatically is added to our CRM. She has all of that information. So all of the phone numbers that she entered, the email that she entered, we have our lead status even set to the fact that we're going to contact her in the future. We have her company name here. We have her lead source marked as chatbot. But if we scroll down, we also have this whole custom section on UTM info. So this pulls in all of that UTM code from our URL and parses that to tell us what the source was for this lead. So we can see our campaign source here was third party. This is through one of our third party ads and it was through one of our banner ads on a third party site. So this allows us to track that and really view the ROI from each individual ad. We can use these fields to go make reports about which of our third party ads are performing well, which ones are bringing the most leads, which ones are bringing the most revenue. And then we can also see we have some open activities here. So this is synced directly from Zoho Bookings. We have a consultation already planned and it's planned for that date that she booked on April 17th. So all this is really doing is centralizing all of your information so that you have it where you're working. So while you're in CRM, you're able to see that booking. Your leads can come from all kinds of sources all over, and they will still come back to your CRM where your sales team can take over. They can start following up and closing those leads and continuing to support those customers. And that's really what it's all about when it comes to marketing your business is finding these different marketing avenues and then figuring out how well they work and investing more in the avenues that perform well for you. When you're able to pull all of this information into Zoho CRM, you're able to easily build those reports and understand where your leads are coming from. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to Travis. He's gonna come up and talk to you about following up with those leads, closing those leads with your sales process and continuing to support those customers. And he's gonna start that by talking about converting your leads to sales. So let's go ahead and give Travis a very warm welcome. <clears throat> Hello everybody, how is everyone? For now though, you can stay where you are. I'm going to move into converting the leads, the one that we just generated through that IT bot, getting into the CRM, and moving into uh, the finance side of things where we show you how our sales systems and our finance systems connect. Firstly, I just want to go through very quickly a little bit about a sales process. It's a sequence of progressive stages designed to create a customer. So it's, what is your funnel? That's your sales process. The goal of a sales process is to convert leads at the top of the funnel. They go through the sales process, something that you have that's unique to your business, that you refine over time and you turn those leads into customers. So you just saw Summer generate a lead here, and now we wanna go through the qualifying and closing them, taking them from that lead section into a customer, and generally it's broken up. Uh, this is generally the job of marketing over here, and this is sales, but it all kind of interacts, right? If we know how businesses tend to run in actuality, you know, a good sales process can work as good marketing, whether it's when you're buying something and it's a really easy checkout and you make it super easy on the customer and they have a good feeling from that, that's kind of a little bit of marketing. I don't want you to think of these as completely distinct parts because when you're running a business, kind of every interaction with the customer can act as a good bit of marketing. 
so just keep that in mind as you think about and craft your own sales process, something that will be useful to you should you use a CRM uh, more in depth. There's a lot of uh, misunderstanding about what exactly these modules are. I've had a lot of confusion, a lot of people saying I put my contacts and accounts, turns out that was wrong, I need to move data over. So before I jump in and start throwing this terminology and this jargon around, I just want to define it all very quickly for you. So a lead is raw information that needs to be followed up on. This is unqualified. This is like a phone number, this is an email address. This is something that you know a little bit of info about this person, but you don't know how relevant they are to your business. That's where you need to figure that out. And if they are relevant to your business, you put them in the contacts module, which is where you store someone who is interested in your product, qualified team, you can sell to them, right? This is qualified people. These people are important to your business. You've converted them from a lead and moved them from one module into the contact module. From there, we have accounts. This is where people tend to get tripped up between contacts and accounts. The whole idea of having an account separate from a contact is simply this. Do we have relationships with businesses, with accounts, organizations? No, the idea is we have relationships with people at organizations, right? People, contacts, at organizations, accounts. Pers it's not that I know, for example, I get these shirts printed. It's not that I know the company, Custom Inc. I know a sales rep that works with me consistently as my account manager at Custom Inc. I have a relationship with that person. Should that person disappear? Should they be fired? Whatever the case is, I now need to establish a new relationship with someone at that company to hopefully get the same perks we get, whether it be discounts, good support, uh, just a friendly working relationship, whatever it is, right? So for that, I need to have more than one contact associated to this account in a CRM. So that should something happen with your relationship, your relationship with the entire business doesn't fall apart. Accountability, keeping a history of you and who you are. And then of course, deals. This is where your sales process comes into play. This is your sales pipeline. You're running customers through a progressive set of stages to hopefully finally close a deal with them. And you're gonna see some more of that in action. Uh, this is sometimes called like opportunities or potentials. It's all just different dumb sales words for saying the same thing. Deals, this is your sales pipeline. <clears throat> so I wanna move to the demo now. You just saw Karen Crow this new lead get introduced into the CRM through the chat bot on Leave IT to Us' website. So now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. We're in CRM again, we're in the leads module. If I click on Karen Crow, I hit this little calendar up here. So now we're on Karen Crow's lead record. We see all kinds of information, all the information that the chat bot collected is displayed right here. So now we need to figure out, is this person someone that we can actually do business with, someone that's relevant to our business? Can we make a deal with this person? Can we turn this person from a lead into a contact? So you actually saw that Karen Crow signed up for a consultation, right? All of that stuff is visible here. So any consultation she signed up for through the bot was immediately uploaded and put on our calendar. So a salesperson now knows I have a consultation scheduled with Karen. However, if I don't want to go through and actually, you know, do that, if I just want to call this person right now, all I have to do is hit these three dots and you see this little meet now tab. So I'm hitting the three dots on the lead record, Karen Crow, and you see meet now. If I click this, this will right within CRM bring up a window that says, okay, let's say um, early consult. I can set a duration. Participants, I only have one, Karen Crow, related to this lead, Karen Crow, and I can hit start meeting. Event created successfully, and it's gonna automatically launch me into Zoho Meeting, which you can use for webinars, for meetings like this. We use it extensively internally. I can choose what audio I want, right? And now, right away, I'm set up with a meeting. I didn't have to install some other thing. I didn't have to go over and start a new tab and click into this meeting, right? It's just launching me straight into it. I don't have to do anything. And in fact, if I look at Karen Crow's email, this is her email, her Zoho mail. I'm now in the Karen Crow account. Don't get discombobulated, disoriented. You actually see this invitation already showed up. This is an invitation to the consult that I just made. So Karen Crow, all she has to do, hit this. 
say she wants to go, and it's going to launch meeting just like that, just like you saw for her as it did for Nigel. But I don't want to actually meet with Karen Crow right now. Let's say we met. I spoke to Karen. It was a very productive conversation. It was very good. And I said, you know what, Karen, you're a contact because we're making a deal. You came to me for business, and that's what we're doing, business. And it's what I love doing. I'm Nigel Nerdovich. So I'm going to hit convert because I want to move her out of this leads module now into the contact module. I know she's relevant. We had that conversation. I'm going to make a deal with this person. So when I do that, it'll prompt me a little bit, create new account, yes, create new contact, yes, this is just the conversion point. And I'm also gonna create a new deal along the way. So I had that conversation with her, she said she wants some services, let's say it was a, a big service, $20,000 and one, just for Nigel, for doing such a good job. Closing date, we're gonna close it today. So these stages, remember when I talked a little bit about sales process? These are the steps in our sales process. So we start at leave IT to us with the defaults. We start with qualification, needs analysis, value proposition, right? These are things that can come preset. There are a bunch of presets in CRM, but they're things that if you're still using them as a business, you can probably do better because the sales process is something that's really mapped onto your business that you refine and build out over time to close more deals. So I'm just gonna say we're at the qualification stage. Actually, I'll say we're needs analysis. The deal name is uh, uh, networking uh, setup. So, so now we're good to go. We're saying, all right, create this new deal, move Karen from leads into contacts and convert. So it's gonna say, hey, we did it. It's been successfully converted. This little gamification badge comes up, right? This is just a system built into the CRM to kind of encourage your people to sell more, to do more. And we're now going to open the deal. So big time leads, why is it big time? Because that's the name of the company. So it auto named it and I just added a little snippet afterwards calling it network, network setup so we can easily find this in the future. And now this is where we're gonna track the sales process. So you can see our stages here, qualification. We're currently on needs analysis. Moving forward, we have the value proposition. Moving forward even now, identify decision makers, proposal slash price quote. So let's say this is the stage we're at. We identified the decision maker, Karen Crow. We figured out exactly what they want, and now we actually need to, what are we doing for this person? How much is it gonna cost? Can we get them fully on board? We only have one contact person on this deal. In reality, this might be a problem for your business. You might wanna have more than one person, uh, just in case something goes wrong with another person, you can't get a hold of someone, right? You wanna build that out, have a really robust deal set up. But I've moved it to the proposal slash price quote stage specifically so I could show you if I scroll down to the related list and this just helps me navigate this deal record a little more easily. So I'm gonna hit this. So as you see, it automatically generated that once I moved to the proposal stage. So now if I hit this, it'll ask me to edit it. And here I can set up a bunch of different information in it, right? It'll have the rate. So 20,001, that's the rate that the deal's worth. That's what we set it up to be. I can add customer notes. I can add things down here, like terms and conditions. I can customize whatever I want those to be. So for example, the term is, uh, with this deal, I own your business. So you know, no one reads those things anyway, so they'll scroll past it and we'll be fine. And we're gonna email it to Karen Crow. So I'll save it, save and submit. And close this little window here. Click over, refresh. And there's the estimate, right? So this is the estimate I just generated. As you can see, 20,001 notes, terms and conditions. Ideally, you wanna fill out the terms and conditions a little bit more so that they buzz past this and they don't see that you own your business. But that'll be good enough and we'll send the mail. Approval is still pending. Let us see if it's sent. So it must be approved through the Zoho Books organization. Okay, going over to books. So in this process, Nigel Nerdovich has an approval that he must do. So we're gonna go over here, pending approval, and we're gonna approve it. 
So you can set this up. You can make this that estimates or invoices don't need to be approved and they can just send right away from the CRM. And now we're gonna send this. This is a templated email that you can edit, but this looks good enough for us. We're gonna tell it to attach the PDF and we're going to send it. Your estimate has been sent. So right away, you see that Karen Crow has received the estimate here. If I click on it. Now this PDF is the exact same PDF we're looking at here. So as a salesperson, I don't have to go and do a bunch of stuff, right? I can automatically generate this estimate and send it directly to Karen Crow. And we're now looking at the exact same document of record, the customer and Karen Crow. So if I close this estimate, because I don't want to look at the PDF of it, I actually want to view it. This is being now hosted by Zoho Books. So you're starting to see now books and CRM working together here. This estimate, in fact, was generated by books. So we're totally connecting the sales and finance side of things. Right, I can look at this, I can print it out or download it. And at this point, I would want to call Mr. Nigel Nurovich and say, hey, this looks great. I didn't read your terms and conditions because that's fine, no one ever does, but I'm ready to pay $20,001 to you for this network setup. I say, okay, great, that sounds fantastic. Let's close that deal then. So if I go back to the deal here, and I move over to closed one. We close it and want it today, save it. I go to finance. So let's hit new invoice. So we're just gonna say, this is what we're selling. Save and submit. And now we're moving forward. Thank God, okay. So we're gonna send the mail. Same thing we did with the estimate, right? It's a similar process here. It's asking us to get approval in books. So in this case, same thing, we're going to go back to books, look at our invoices here, approve it. It is approved, and now we can actually have our salesperson send it. Go over to CRM, send mail. Again, it's pulling up a different template. So you have a template for estimates, a template for invoices, and we're gonna send. All right, your invoice has been sent and we'll see it pop up right here once again. So again, it's attaching a PDF for their records, but it's also allowing us to simply view that invoice, and we could pay it from this portal as well. Now, I don't wanna do that as a customer. Uh, I don't wanna like put my credit card info up here to get that going. So if we go to books, I'll show you how we mark this as paid. So here we go, approved. I want to record payment on this, right? There are a bunch of different payment modes. So say this person, for example, they didn't want to use their credit card and sign in there and actually pay for it. They just came into your shop and said, hey, I got the invoice, I wanna pay cash. In that case, right, there's no digital thing happening there, it's just cash to hand. So in this case, I would actually have to manually record payment. We're gonna hit cash and record the payment. You'll see now this went from draft, pending approval. This is now marked as paid and it puts this little badge up on the top left to make it clear that this has been paid for you. So now if I want to go over to contacts, so now that I have a working relationship with, the, with this person and I know that, okay, they've paid me, I now want to give them some more options to interact with my business from the finance and sales side. Because this is ultimately kind of the, the promise of this, right? You're working in sales to generate things in finance and your sales teams and your finance teams, they don't have to communicate. They don't have to run across the room. They don't have to get a file and scan it, right? Things that your sales team are doing is automatically being populated within finance for you. And we wanna pass that convenience on to the customer here. So if I go to more and configure client portal, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna give this customer one place where they can log in and pay, log in and see their entire history of record of payments, with this company, they can change their shipping details, they can do all sorts of stuff really easily. So I can set the portal password, I can simply save it. And now if I move back over to Karen Crow's email address, she will get a message. Sometimes it goes to the spam, here it is. I've been invited to join their portal. That sounds good to me because I don't wanna have to you know, look up 
in my email to find records anymore. I want to have just a bunch of records all in one place that give me a total history. So it's asking me to enter a password. All right, looks good. Update. Welcome to Levi Us's portal. Got it, thanks. So here you can see all my outstanding invoices. I have none because I paid my invoice, as you recall. It's pulling information from sales and finance and populating this portal for me. The last payment made. You can see the contact details of this portal, right? So this is the company that this portal is attached to. These are my details. I can edit a shipping address here if I want. I can edit a billing address. And this is pretty cool because, I mean, me personally, I've had a bunch of situations where I want to change my billing or shipping address with a company. I want to see just generally, like, what are my statements with this company? How much have I actually paid you? Very few companies, like cable companies, energy companies, anything, almost none of them make it this easy to just see this information. And having it all in one spot is really powerful and something that's really nice to do for the customer. I can see all my statements here as well. So this will be like a full record. Payments, estimates, invoices, all that stuff is going to be pulled into this one portal now. And I don't have to worry about finding receipts and finding invoices and estimates all in my email. It's all going to be populated right here. So now let's say uh, Karen Crow. She's happy, right? She's had a good experience, but she wants a little bit of help on the support side of things. So if she goes to Levi Tidas's website, let's go here. She's decided, no, I actually need some help with my service here. I need a little bit of support. This is the support portal that's being generated by Zoho Desk. So now we're trying to show you bringing in support tools, marketing tools, sales tools, finance tools, all into one easy, seamless customer experience. I don't want to talk to the IT bot today, so I'm just going to hide that. And I'm going to add a ticket. So I'll say my contact name is Karen Crow. My email, Karen Crow is Oho. And let's just say uh, network down. What did I pay all that money for? Karen Crow is irate. Karen Crow is so angry that her typing looks like a mess. What have you done to me? To my business. She got a little, a little bit cleaner there. All right, so now we've proved that we're not a robot by just filling this out. And Karen Crow is so angry she doesn't want to take a phone call, right? She just wants to submit a support ticket and be done with things. She's going to submit. And now it's in. It's in the system. Karen Crow's done. She's washed her hands of this situation. She wants to move on. So as a support agent in Zoho Desk, it would be very helpful if I had a little more information on Karen Crow. Fortunately, we know that in the same way that your sales and your finance data should be merged a little bit, should be accessible to both departments. It shouldn't be siloed at all. The same thing goes for all of your support data. It's important to keep that stuff and populate it relevant in relevant places. So this is the ticket I just submitted. I'm now in Zoho Desk. I'm looking at Karen Crow's ticket. And I can actually see, okay, who is this person to our organization? In terms of cash, in terms of how much uh, money they've spent, I can hit CRM and see all potentials. All right, so I actually see they had a potential here. So this was a pretty big one, right? I see this was a $20,000 deal. I see that they're pretty upset. I now know that I need to take this pretty seriously. If I go back and hit this little books icon, I can see all the invoices and estimates related to Karen Crow here. And I can get all that stuff as a support agent directly in Zoho Desk. I don't have to contact sales and ask what potentials, what deals we've had with this person. I don't have to contact billing and ask what potentials or deals we've had with this person. It's all being populated right here, and this will inform how I interact with this individual. So that's all I have for you, but I hope that the key thing that you've seen here is that it's important, and there are a lot of very powerful things you can do for not only the customer, but also your teams, your sales, your billing, your support, by dispersing that information and populating it in the relevant areas with a lot of the apps that we use. Right, we see the value in that. In fact, Zoho is the only place where your sales and your finance information, those two systems talk to each other seamlessly. Right, We're the only ones that do that. And you see how that can really be helpful for customers and sales teams alike. 
So that is all I have for you.